We're going to continue our discussion about population densities um, by talking about the population densities of the states. And the first question, or the first couple things it wanted us to do here was to fill in the um, approximate area of our state and um, the population of our state. And so this was given to us in the preview lesson. So I just went to the preview lesson and filled these in. So the approximate area of Texas is 261,797 square miles. And the estimated current population, I think this was actually from 2010, so I'm sure it's higher now, is 25,145,561 people. So it says that we're supposed to estimate, no calculator, um, the current population density. Um, so if we look at these two, remember we're looking at people per square mile, typically, when you're talking about population density. So if we're going to estimate this, this would be the 25,145,561 people divided by the 261,797 square miles. Now, we're not going to get real exact with this. We're just going to get a rough estimate. So I'm going to um, treat this. Let me take this up here. So I'm going to treat this as if this is about 25 um, million people. And I'm going to treat this as if it was about um, 260,000 square miles. So to just round both of these so they have a couple uh, digits at the front that aren't zeros and the rest zeros. So this is roughly this many people, roughly this many square miles, and I'm going to go ahead and cancel zeros. Remember this is just an estimate. So I have one zero left here that I can cancel and one here. So this is approximately um, 2,500 people for every 26 square miles. Again, we're trying to get an estimate. So let's say that that isn't too far off from 2,500 people per every 25 square miles. Um, that way we can, uh, because of the 25s, we can, and can uh, estimate this or uh, simplify this a lot easier. And that would be about um, if you take 2,500 and you divide it by 25, you get um, 100 people per one square mile. So if we take 2,500 and we divide it by 25, we get 100. So this is roughly 100 people per square mile. Again, this is a rough estimate, but that's what we were sort of looking for was just a, a rough estimate. So it's about 100 people per square mile. So that's the population density of Texas. So now it says uh, we're going to complete the comparison table we began in our notes um, from the preview assignment. And we're not going to complete this whole thing because it's really long to do all 50 states. And I think it's a little bit um, unnecessary and too much. So what I've done is I've just um, gone through and I have clipped out here um, from Alabama to Louisiana. By the time we do that much you'll definitely get the point of this and we don't need to do the rest of the 50 states. So um, when we're calculating um, population density, again let me emphasize we're looking for how many people per square mile. Now we have to be careful because in this table, and I'm sure they did this on purpose to make you realize that you don't always just look at the direction that's given in the table, they actually gave the population before they gave the area. So for all of these we're going to take the first number, I'm sorry, the second number and divide it by the first number. So when we're looking at this um, for Alabama, we're going to take 4,779,731 736 as your population and we're going to divide that by 50,744 square miles. And so if I do that calculation 
four seven seven nine seven three six divided by fifty thousand seven forty four we get roughly and I'm gonna do it to one digit like they did here so this is ninety four point two comes out to be ninety four point one nine so the population density per square mile of, of Alabama is 94.2 people per square mile. Alaska, as we mentioned, this was already calculated in the preview assignment, is only 1.2 people per square mile, so very um, sparsely populated. And then um, I'm going to do one more here, and then I'm going to turn off the video and just fill these in. So this one would be 6,392,017. For a population divided by 113,635 square miles for Arizona. So 6392017 divided by 113635. And that comes out to be about 56.4. Because it's 56.25, and so the 2, 5 would round, the 5 would round up the 2 to a 3. So 56.3 square miles. I'm sorry, not square miles, 56.3 people per square mile. Now, what I would recommend you do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and fill this rest of this table in. But I would do at least three or four of these on your own and make sure that you're getting the right answers and you can check them as soon as the video restarts. So I'd pause right now, work the, you know, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, or whatever ones you want, and then when you come back, you can see if you were getting them correctly. So now I've got the rest of this filled in. Hopefully, again, that you did a few of these on your own and uh, to check that you were doing it correctly. Um, each one, it's the same process. You just take the population and you divide it by the area. I apologize if any of these are wrong. I, I didn't intentionally do any of them wrong, um, but I didn't check them uh, either. So um, to get to the key for this is kind of a pain. So um, I just did these by hand and, and filled them in. And uh, so we have everywhere from, you know, Alaska with only 1.2 uh, people per square mile up to um, the District of Columbia or DC, Washington DC, that ha has a uh, 9,864.3 people per square mile. Now again, this is a little unusual because this District of Columbia is more of a city than it is a state. It doesn't have a lot of uh, open area. It's just the area around um, around the capital, and so um, DC is going to be um, much more densely populated because it's mostly just a city. Um, so now, and I also went over here and filled in um, the more accurate uh, population or density of uh, Texas. And if we actually divide those two numbers, it comes out to be about 96 people per square mile. So 100 people per square mile wasn't bad for as rough of an estimate as we did. Now the goal was to take all 50 states then and place them into this table. And what's a little weird about this table is it's not evenly spaced. So this first column is for any states that have a density less than 10 people per square mile. Then it goes from 10 to 100, and then it goes from 100 to 1,000. So you notice this is only 0 to 10. This is 10 to 100. That's a span of 90. This is a span of 900. And then this is anything over 1,000. So there's quite a wide variety in the, in the densities, and so that's why they kind of had to do it this way, but realize that these aren't, you know, evenly spaced um, ranges or uh, classes. So uh, we're going to fill this in with um, what we do have, and the goal was to fill it in with all 50 states, but we'll fill in what we have. So Alabama would be um, in this, let's see if I can slide this over here and get most as much of it on here as I can. So Alabama would be in um, this second column here. And then we have Alaska's already filled in. Arizona would also be in this column of 10 to 100 because they're at 56.3. Arkansas would be in this column with 56. California would jump up to this column because it has 
238.9, so uh, it's between 100 and 1,000. And then um, Colorado would be back down here. Uh, you've got Connecticut at 737.7, so it's going to go here. And again, I'm going to pause and fill this in. So as you can see, we didn't finish the table, but of the states that we had, um, Alaska is the only one in this uh, group of states that had a population density under 10 people per square mile. Um, there were several that were um, in the 10 to 100 uh, people per square mile. And then there were even more that were in the 100 to 1,000. Now, again, is that, you know, because they're really, again, the categories aren't really even. So this is a 900 people span, but still we had the largest number in this column. And in fact, I had to sneak the Louisiana in here off to the side. And D.C. was the only one that was over 1,000. So um, if we wanted to talk about, uh, write a few sentences about the densities of the states with the greatest and lowest population density. Well, of the ones that we did, D.C., which isn't technically a state, was the only one that was that was over a thousand. The next closest was uh, was Connecticut with 737.7, um, and then we had you know several that were in the 10 to 100 category, and the most that were in the 100 to 1,000. The least densely populated which is no surprise is Alaska. Um, it's still thought of as being uh, quite a bit of wilderness um, in Alaska, not, um, not very densely populated uh, and still very, um, very different than the other states in the country. Um, so anyway, that's it for this, for this lesson. And um, we'll pick back up with, uh, with 10D here in just a moment. So for the last part of lesson 10, um, we're going to talk about the census and what they call apportionment, which is how many um, representatives each state gets to go to um, the Congress. So uh, the first question to ask here is, what are some reasons why the government wants to conduct the United States Census every 10, year, 10 years? Um, the Census Bureau counts the population and collects other information. So um, typically we'll have a discussion in class about this, about all the different things, but I thought for this situation it might be best if I just went and got um, some information from Google. And so this is what I found on Google. It says um, that at national level, census information is used to plan the provision of health care, education, employment, transport, etc. It's used to help determine where to build new schools, roads, health care facilities, child care, senior citizen center, and so on. So it's um, it's used by the government to know basically where the different needs are, what types of people are in different areas, and what, what the needs might be. However, I also found this quote from Penn State that talks more about what the original purpose of the census was. And it was that the Founding Fathers thought the data called the census was so important they mandated as part of the Constitution. The census ensures that each community gets the right number of representatives in government um, because representation is based on population, and so an up-to-date tally is essential. So the original purpose was for this um, to have these votes apportioned correctly. So we're going to now look at um, some changes in um, five states that are in the New, New England region. Um, this is not all the states in New England, by the way. But these five states in New England, and we're going to look about at their change in population from the year 2000 to the year 2010. So we have two different types of change, and it's been a little bit since we've talked about this, but remember there's what we know is absolute change, and then there's also what we know is relative change. And so um, the absolute change is just how much the population absolutely changed. What was the absolute change between the two? two years. So for instance, Maine in uh, 2000 was at 1,274,923 and in 2010 it was 1,328,361. So if we subtract those, 1 
328-361 minus 1274923, we get um, 53,000. Uh, 438. And if we do that for all the other states, um, we can fill this in. So we're taking the 2010 population and we're subtracting the 2000 population because we're taking where it ended and where it started. If the population happened to actually drop, you would actually get a negative here because if this was smaller, you'd be taking a smaller number minus a bigger number. But none of the populations went down, so we'll get positive numbers for all these. So I've gone through and calculated each of those, taking the 2010 population and subtracting the 2000 population, and these are the numbers that I got. Now, the other thing that they want us to look at is the relative change. Um, so the relative change is in relation to where it started, or in comparison, I'll use relation because that's where the word relative comes from. So in relation to where it started. So for instance, for Maine, yes, it grew uh, 53,438, but how does that compare to where it started? So for instance, we see that Massachusetts uh, grew the most, but it was also by far the largest state to begin with, so that's not necessarily uh, much of a surprise. So to get this relative change, um, I'm going to go down here, um, we're going to take 53,438, which is how much it grew, and we're going to divide it by where it started, 1,274,923. And when we do that, 53,438 divided by 1,274,923 gets us um, approximately 0 0.042. It's one nine, but I'm going to round the one up to two since it's got a nine after it. So 0 0.042, which is a 4.2% change. If I shift that decimal two spots, that's a 4.2% change. So if I continue to do that for, for the other states, I'll do one more since this is a little bit more difficult cal uh, calculation than we were doing before. Uh, we don't have room there. Um, So I'm going to take this and we'll do this all the way down here. Okay, so this would be 198,532 is how much it changed. In comparison to where Massachusetts started is 6,349,097. So if I divide 198,532 by where it started, 6,349,097, I get that this is approximately 0 0.031. So that's about a 3.1% change. And I'll continue that for the other three states and fill that in. And again, remember, even though I'm going to magically pause this and the numbers are going to pop up there, it would be better if you paused it right now, calculate at least two, a couple of those other states and see if when the answers come up, you were doing it correctly. That'll give you confidence when you're doing your homework. Okay, so now that I have these numbers filled in, there's one that I want to especially point out. I didn't make a mistake here with Rhode Island and forget to shift the decimal. This actually came out to be 0 .004. It was less than 1% because 0 .01 would be 1%. And this actually came out when you when you divided to be 0 .004. And so when you shift the decimal over, you still get less than 1% increase um, for the relative change in Rhode Island. So this asks, what is the overall relative change in the New England region? And I'm honestly not going to do that, because in order to do that, we'd have to add up the entire um, population here, and then um, the entire 2010 population and subtract the difference and do these calculations. So I'm not going to mess with that right now. It's not really important for the rest of the questions. Um, but it says, which state in this table grew the most? Well, 
they give us a hint that there could be more than one answer. And the, the question is, this is kind of a load, or the problem is this is kind of a loaded question because when you say which grew the most, do you mean which grew the most percentage-wise or which grew the most in absolute change? So absolute change, Massachusetts definitely grew the most. It gained the most people of these five states. And so um, you could very well argue that Massachusetts grew the most. But if you were looking at um, the relative change in comparison to where they started, New Hampshire grew the most. So even though it only gained 80,684 people compared to Massachusetts um, over 198,000 people, compared to where it started, which is much smaller than Massachusetts, um, it had a, a higher relative change. It grew 6.5% excuse me, 6.5 percent. So if you put that in perspective, for every 100 people that were living in New Hampshire in 2000, in 2010 there was 106 and a half people. So a six to seven person change out of every 100, which is pretty significant. So uh, each state, um, so we'll put this, we can say Massachusetts for um, absolute and then um, New Hampshire for relative. Um, now it says each state sends representatives to the US Congress based on its population. Currently the law mandates a total of 435 representatives. So there are only 435 representatives in the US Congress. Um, those 435 are supposed to be split among the states based on their population. So after the 2010 census, Massachusetts actually lost a seat in the House. Can you think of an explanation for that? So how could Massachusetts have grown by 198,532 people, relative change of 3.1 percent, and yet lost a representative? And the answer to that is, there were other states that grew more than they did. And so when they went to reapportion this, um, Massachusetts, even though it did grow, I mean, all these states grew, but even though it grew, it didn't grow as much as some other states. So let's look at what um, happened from 2000 to 2010. So these states on this side actually gained um, seats in the House. And these states over here actually lost seats in the House. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they lost population. It's just that in comparison to the rest of the country, um, they didn't grow as much, and so they ended up losing some seats to some other states. So um, Texas actually gained four representatives from 2000 to 2010, which is a, a very significant amount. Um, if you're into politics at all, you can kind of go back and look. That's pretty significant. Florida gained two, and then all these other states, Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, South Carolina, Utah, and Washington, each gained one. These states, again, not necessarily saying they lost population, but they didn't grow as fast, and so they ended up losing some seats to these states. So New York, Ohio, Illinois, Iowa, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Michigan, Missouri, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania lost seats to these states. So um, what do you think happened to the representation of the states not listed above? Well, if they're not listed in the gain and they're not listed in the loss, those other states, and how many states do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So the other 32 states must have just stayed um, stable. So the other 32 uh, just kept the same. So those 32 states kept the same number of representatives. Okay, and then it said uh, most of the states in the loss table actually gained population but are growing at a slower rate than the states in the gain table. So Michigan is the only state that actually lost population during that period from 2000 to 2010. Um, they went from 9,938,444 to 9,833,640. So they lost um, 
about 105,000 people um, in their population. Uh, and that's because Michigan has had some economic problems with um, all with the uh, change in uh, all the car companies, all the automobile industry um, moving out of Detroit. That's one of the main things that has hurt uh, Michigan, among among other things. Um, this was before the whole Flint uh, uh, water problem, so it's not because of that. Because this is 2000 to 2010, and that was before they were having that issue in Flint, um, which I'm sure is not going to help things um, for Michigan either. But let's go ahead and compute the absolute and relative change. Again, we always take the end and subtract the beginning. So we're going to take 9,833,640 and we're going to subtract 9,938,440. Absolute change, how much the state population actually cha absolutely changed was, hold on, I'm typing in my calculator here, um, 104804. But we've got a smaller number minus a larger number, so this is actually negative 104,804. That's how much it went down by. So you could either say negative 104,804 or you could say a 104,804 decrease in population. And so how much is that as far as a relative change? Well, we're going to take that and divide it by where it started. Remember, we're not taking the lower number. We're taking where it started. So we're going to take this number, even though it's larger, because that's where they were at in 2000. So we're going to take... Uh, the 104,804, not forgetting that it's negative, and we're going to divide that by where the state started at 9,938,404, and see what that comes out to be. And that comes out to be, it's 0 .0105. So if I round that to that third decimal spot, it, I'm going to round it to 0 .011. Again, it's a negative. And so that's a negative 1.1% change for the state of Michigan. So if we think of that as being roughly negative one percent. That means for every hundred people that were living in Michigan in 2000, in 2010 there was only 99. So every out of every hundred people in Michigan there was one less in 2010, in fact a little bit more than one less in 2010 than there was in 2000. So that concludes um, unit or lesson 10, unit 10, and uh, hopefully that'll help you on your homework and we'll pick back up next week with Unit 11.